okay so the distance between the distance between pole p and focal point or focus f of a spherical mirror is called the focal length of the mirror and it is denoted by small f okay the distance between the pole p and focal point the distance between this capital p means pole okay f means focal point where the image is formed is called as a focal point so the distance between the focal point and the pole is called as a focal length okay and it is denoted by the letter small f understand so here the boundary of the curved surface of a spherical mirror is called its aperture the boundary of the curved surface okay so boundary means what so this this is the boundary where it is stopped na so this is the boundary so the boundary of the spherical mirror is called as what aperture okay understand so m m1 m1 m m m dash so here it is showing like this na m m dash okay so this is the one and underline all these points small small definitions what is focal length we might have asked what is pole what is radius of curvature what is center of curvature and what is uh, aperture okay so represents the aperture of the mirror for mirrors with small aperture the focal length f is half of the radius of the curvature okay so that is why r is equal to 2f so small the focal length is half of the radius of the curvature so the focal length means what the distance between the focus and p is called as a focal length na so now radius of the curvature so if the half of the radius of the curvature mathematically r is equal to 2f so small aperture if the, if it is a small aperture means so focal length will be how means it is half of the radius of the curvature this is the radius of the curve the center point of the spherical mirror is called as a hollow sphere is called as a center of a curvature radius of a curvature okay so radius of a curvature means half of this one is the radius of the curvature okay that is why capital r is equal to 2f focal length if the aperture is small the focal length f is half of the radius of the curvature so it it, it is r is equal to 2f in other words first the focal point is the midpoint of the line joining the center of curvature c and p okay loss of reflection at spherical surfaces so spherical surfaces how the loss of reflection is the loss of reflection in the plane surface is the angle of reflection is equal to the angle of incident okay so plane and curved the previous chapter we have learned the loss of reflection these laws apply uniformly to all surfaces plane or curved curved means like this na curved surfaces or plane surfaces for everything the reflection laws are same that means angle of incident ray of light Uh, on a curved surface then we get the information at the angle of reflection that means angle of incident is equal to the angle of reflection so here you see this is what this is the concave okay this is the concave and this is what this is the convex so always at the concave mirror the ions you see nails na keel so everything will be as though it so coming everything it will be meeting at one point so like this coming it is called as a converging meeting at one point converging right here converging that means converging towards one point okay meeting converging converging mirror means concave mirror and convex you see going other side that means diverging diverging means going different directions taking different directions diverging okay so it is it is the 
convex mirror also they say as a diverging mirror convex meeting at one point all the rays so it is the converging mirror or the concave mirror so rays are coming like this and the angle i is the right here incident ray okay incident ray and angle r is the reflected ray so as the light passes on the surface of the plane mirror or a curved mirror spherical mirror light that much light only reflected back so angle i is equal to angle r so the line which is going in between the incident ray and reflected ray which passes through the center of curvature it is called as a normal ray this dotted line is the normal ray thank you students